Um, but on the go and at work and when you don't have time to fully sterilize them like you would, you can use these little microwave bags. And here's what the bags look like. It tells you on the back how much water to put in here. You can use a bottle to measure. It, I mean, that's how it tells you what to do. And then you just microwave it for the amount of time it tells you. Each bag can be used 20 times. And there's little check boxes, so you just mark off each time you use them. And that quickly steam sterilizes your pumping equipment. And then I used these a lot. They're, um, what are they called? Quick, quick. Clean wipes by Medela. Um, so you can actually wipe down all your pump parts, and um, I think you have to wait 10 minutes to let them air dry, and then they're supposedly sterilized. Um, I I did this just because I was at work 12 hours and I didn't want milk sitting around in my parts. Um, so this really helped. But, like, there are some parts of this that you really can't get those wipes in. Like, it's really difficult to get in here and get it really cleaned. And it's even more difficult to, you know, get in there. So, it just was like a pre-wash, and then I would come home and still sterilize them. Another thing I've heard you can do, but I'm not, like, a doctor or anything, so don't, like, just maybe ask your doctor or lactation consultant about this. But I've heard you can pump and then um, put your flanges in like a Ziploc bag and put them in the fridge, um, you know, just like you're going to put your milk. And you can use your parts more than once if you keep them refrigerated because the milk is still, um, it doesn't like spoil or grow bacteria because it's in the refrigerator. I never did that. That's just something I've, I've heard through the grapevines. So. Um, ask your your lactation consultants about that. Um, I'm going to show you the our bottles of choice for um, pumping and breastfeeding and whatever. So this is the brand we use, and this bottle is already assembled, which is why I'm showing it to you. This is a four ounce bottle. Um, I usually only use the nine or eleven ounce bottles, but this was a free sample bottle I got from my baby registry. So I'm going to show you this one. The first reason I like it is because it has a really wide base nipple. When they latch onto this, this is much more like latching on to your nipple. Um, maybe not this part, but they have to open their mouth and actually latch onto this um, and use their tongue to get the milk out. If you don't use a wide mouth bottle with a with the wide nipple, they don't have to latch onto it. They can just kind of suck on the end, and you don't want to teach them to do that because then they'll do that to your nipples. The Medela bottles also, I don't have the, a nipple because um, I threw them all away and bought new ones that I are still in a package. But um, even Medela now has a wide mouth uh, nipple, and that's the kind you want to get, in my opinion, if you're breastfeeding because it's, it's what's like the breast. Um, so really like the nipples. They come in stages one, two, three, four, and variable flow. I've used them all, um, and they definitely there's definitely a noticeable difference um, between the different flows. There's all the, also this like um, vent system where it's supposed to keep from getting too much air in the tummy. Here it is. So this particular one has um, four parts. It has five parts. The lid, the nipple, the the ring the nipple goes in, and the vent system, and the bottle. So you just take this, put it in there like so, and screw it on the lid. Avent also has a system um, that doesn't have this. And I, I personally never notice a difference. So if you don't want to deal with this, buy their bottles that are clear plastic. And this one's like tinted blue kind of. But if they're like the real clear plastic, then they don't have this part. Um, okay, so this is the bottle. Great, right? I like it. it. It's great for feeding. Here's what else I like about it. You can pop the nipple out. So your bottle's going to look like this. Here's your lid, right? 
Avent sells these little thingies. You just pop them in the ring, and now you have a solid lid. So you, you pump your milk, put it in here, and now you have a, a really great sealed bottle that you can keep in the fridge with milk. Um, they also make a part that is compatible with the Medela pumps and probably other pumps. I haven't tried other pumps, but it looks like this. All you do is you take their bottle, you take the, the connector piece, screw it on there. You take your flange or shield or whatever, um, and then it screws on here. You directly pump into this bottle take the connector off with the flange and then you take your lid that you put together there you go so you, um, that's why I really like this it's compatible with Medela pumps we bought one of these I don't know how to say the brand it's A-D-I-R-I -I, and it's going to be difficult to see because it's in clear plastic but this I was really afraid he wouldn't take a bottle when I went to work and I was at work so there was no way I could come home to feed him if he wouldn't eat. Um, so we bought one of these bottles thinking in an emergency we would use it and we did have to use it a few times. A few times he refused any other bottle. Um, so you might want to look into getting one or, of these or so but they're expensive and um, I just don't think they're that practical but for the reason I said I think it's fine. You can see this is much more like a breast. Um, so they really latch onto it. It's soft and squishy. Um, and I, don't, I just feel like it's a much more natural bottle for them. Um, and it did work. The thing with these, when the baby gets older, you need to change the um, stage, like the, the flow. And this whole bottle is the nipple. So if you need to, um, if your baby's ready for a faster flow, you have to get all new bottles because you can't change the nipple, it's the bottle. So, um, but to fill this bottle up, this is what I don't like. You have to put the lid on, you unscrew the bottom and then pour the milk in, and then screw this back on, and then take it out and then you can feed. Um, so I just don't think they're that practical but they were a lifesaver in a couple of rare situations. Um, another thing about the Avent bottles, so you can see they're great for um, pumping. They have the wide nipple for the latch. Um, they work great in bottle warmers because this is even plastic. There's not a thick bottom like the Playtex Vent Air ones have a really thick plastic on the bottom and when you go to uh, put that in a bottle warmer it doesn't heat evenly. The heat can't get through the bottom so this even plastic here makes them great for the bottle warmer or setting them in a bowl of warm water. And one thing I forgot to say, these turn into sippy cups too. So you you pop this or the nipple out and Avent sells these little numbers. You just pop that right in there um, and then you have a, a sippy cup. And um, they also sell these. And then this. And so you can even have a sippy cup with handles. And you can kind of move your handles around. You know. So this is truly, Avent, I just love it because there are so many things you can do with the bottles. Um, but I, I did want to show you that it can even be a you can even put a lid on it if you want, but um, newborn Connor could still use these if I wanted him to, but you know, we, we use other sippy cups now, but it's a great transition. It makes transitioning to a sippy cup easier. And one thing I found, these are, you have to suck really hard to get liquid out of those, but if you take this off right here, then um, the water or milk or whatever just easily goes through there. But if you put the spill-proof plastic thing on, it's a little bit harder. There are just a few more things I want to show you. And 
they're basically like com kind of common sense kind of just things I found that help but you can't have enough water <laughs> um, every time you nurse you should try to drink um, if your supply gets low these are two things I found that helps mother's milk organic tea oatmeal and I cannot stand oatmeal so um, like in the bowl like the mushy kind so I either made oatmeal cookies or um, oatmeal to go and this is like a it's like an oatmeal cookie kind of and then another thing um, don't forget your prenatal vitamins you gotta keep taking those when you're breastfeeding so those are kind of my um, just random things I wanted to throw in here with the breastfeeding but I am looking around I do believe I have shown you everything now I'm sorry this was so long but um, I've tried a lot of things breastfeeding and I just wanted to show you the things that worked um, the things that are out there and to let you know it is totally possible to breastfeed and work full time and um, I had a list of a, a couple other things that I didn't get to um, show you but maybe you have some questions about so carriers um, I didn't really nurse too frequently in them I'm just not that coordinated to be able to work that out um, but the Moby wrap and the Ergo are good for breastfeeding if you want to breastfeed in a carrier. Um, as far as nursing shirts go, I own a few and I find them extremely annoying because I, I just don't think they look good. There's just like um, usually like a layer under a layer and you got to get everything right or it looks funny. Um, I personally like to wear two shirts, like a tank top and a shirt over it. Then you can pull your over shirt up, you can pull the, the shirt like this down a little. Then your belly and back still covered, your upper parts covered, and the only thing you're showing is your breast. Um, so personally, that's what I prefer. Um, I do have a pair of nursing pajamas on right now, and with these you just pull down the uh, the top and there's like another little layer underneath. Um, I bought these for the hospital, but they also are like maternity. They also fit during maternity, so they're good for like, I don't know, they're just extremely comfortable, and I like them. So nursing pajamas and sleep bras are great. And the only other thing, definitely use your lactation consultants. I think I said that already, but use them in the hospital. Um, usually hospitals have will have a hotline you can call, uh, most of them for free and get advice if, if needed and I've used them multiple times. Um, your doctor, your doula, your pediatrician, they should all have great um, information for you. And then if you just want some additional resources, I always um, had a, a breastfeeding book that I could refer to. Um, the Complete Guide or The Complete Book of Breastfeeding and the essential guide to breastfeeding. These are the two that I've read. Um, they're fine. They have lots of information, but I do find that they they really only talk about breastfeeding to a year or so, and there's not that much information or help for you later on. So um, I found things like the Little H.A. Lee great for their toddler and tandem nursing groups and things like that. For the early stages of, of breastfeeding, though, um, these books are a great resource. I think that's it, but if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, and I hope you learned something. If you actually watched all of this, then bless you, um, and I wish you the very best in breastfeeding because it is a um, experience that you will only have one or several times in your life, and it is um, it's great. So. I think that's it, but if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I may do a follow-up video if I get enough questions. So, um, happy breast breastfeeding, and good luck to all you mamas, and if you have any questions, even, you know, further when you are breastfeeding and everything, um, I just put myself out there as a resource to you. So feel free to ask me questions. I'll talk to you later, girls. Bye.